Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it's time for a bench press day, but a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please remember to click like down below, it would be greatly appreciated. So more or less what I had said earlier this week, uh, because again, no matter what I do, my, my shoulders just don't like overhead pressing, they don't even like incline pressing, anything else, we're just going to double up on benching. And I had debated doing true close grip, but no, I'm just going to stick with, this is still well inside the rings. Uh, I'm just going to build my bench up this way. I'm going to bench twice a week. And as I've kind of said, I'm going to start bringing my training volumes up now that even though I'm in a small calorie deficit, we are cutting. I brought my carbs way up, mainly because it, when I was doing lower carbs, I can't get the training volumes that I would like. And at this point, I need to push body composition. I have to maximize hypertrophy while losing body fat and losing body weight. And the way to do that is going to be with quality submaximal volume. So I'm going to do a lot of volume. We're going to focus on quality reps, a lot of long range of motion stuff, maximizing hypertrophy. And particularly for the upper body. So again, the percentages are going to be slightly reduced for the tens. But notice everything is strong. Everything is controlled. We're going to get, again, quality effective reps in, quality volume and use the heavy work to attenuate the upper threshold fibers at the start. So people will look at some of this and go, well, this is just a lot of pump work. It is, but we're always starting heavy. We're either squatting, deadlifting, or benching heavy at the start. Okay, this attenuates upper threshold fibers. This allows us to get more out of this volume work because we've already fatigued the upper threshold fibers that we use for maximum strength. So we're going into this work having done that already. So again, the name of the game, keep my carbs as high as I can while cutting, bring my training volumes up. I'm focusing more and more on sleep. I managed to sleep 10 hours last night, by the way, my total sleep. I do do biphasic sleeping, so I wake up. Uh, I'm gonna focus on quality of sleep. I'm gonna bring these training volumes up, staying within four days, and I'm cutting my GPP out. People say, why? Because I use it to raise my work capacity. Now the work capacity is up. I'm in good shape from a conditioning perspective. My off days are just going to be abs and they're going to be plyos. So yes, I will be doing plyometric work on off days a lot, which would be jumping, throwing. And again, volume, volume, volume. Maximizing hypertrophy. And the after effect is that, again, this raises energy turnover a lot, particularly for me when carbs go up. My TDE tends to go up. So what did we do? We, we did an easy uh, training max. I need to treat my benching the way that I treat my squat and my deadlift. That means high volume accessory stuff, and it means conservative training max. There's none of this grinding, none of this missing. Um, I'm calculating off of a 305 training max now for the bench. And I'm just going to bring that up. I have time before competitions next year to bring the bench up, build the musculature, dial it in perfect. Get my bench perfect and build the muscles up of the benching. So that means we do our 5-3-1 set. I did five sets of 10 on pause benching. Five sets of body weight dips. And I'll slowly bring reps up on these. I ended up doing just 5 by 10, but I did 12 on the last one. But after all the benching, these are, these are kind of hard. They're fairly fatiguing. And I'm finding my sweet spots for these where I can really kind of get the, the best ranges of motion. And the thing is, today's workout feels good on my shoulders. That's the main thing. We need to get everything thick using exercises that put muscle where I need it. Uh, I need to maximize pec, tricep, and delt development. And I think people will be surprised that I'm going to do the upright rows for, for delts because it builds my whole yoke. All right, it builds the yoke. But it also does work the front delt, does work the front delts. And because again, I'm doing things like dips in here, the front delts might be a little neglected, All right? Dips don't hit the front delts that well. It's a pec and tricep. So the, you know, the wider grip benching does, which is not really wide, it's still close grip. Doing the rep work on it does work delts quite a bit. Doing it all paused helps. But the rest of my, my pressing related training is maybe not as delt as intensive as I might want. So I need the upright rows for that. All right, so I did five by 10 on both of those and then I did dumbbell extensions. And again, these are hard. Once I get this far into it, 
these little 30 pound dumbbells are hard because I've done all that benching, right? We've done all those dips. My triceps are fairly fatigued, but this is ensuring that I get that long head a little bit. And part of me wants to just come in and do dumbbell presses instead of all this. And I might do that again for some phases because it works very well. But I want to make sure the whole tricep gets fully built. Maybe if I reduce the volume slightly in some phases, I can pull dips, I can pull the extensions and just do the dumbbell presses after benching, and that might be the way to go. And I can do that in future phases. But right now, I want to maximize all this hypertrophy and get all the angles. And by doing flat bench and dips, I'm making sure my pecs get hit from every angle. Right, We're getting two very different angles there. Uh, triceps are being worked quite a bit differently, and then this kind of works the triceps from a completely different perspective. Again, keeping it light though, that's why I'm doing these last, and that's the other thing. This is all fatiguing. I'm, I'm not splitting this up, pushing and pulling back and forth. I'm doing it as a push and then a pull in my workout. And that way, I'm accruing metabolic fatigue very quickly so that by the time I get to an exercise like this, a little bitty ridiculous light weight feels heavy. This is how we save our elbows. And the triceps are really fatigued, so really the only head that, that's having to take the brunt of it then is the long head is having to do more work because the other heads are so fatigued from the benching and stuff. That again, maximizing development with less stress on those elbows. All right, rowing. Uh, here's what we're gonna do. I got a lot out of all the fat bar rowing. My grip has come up tremendously. I don't want to overtrain that grip angle because this is where we run into problems. So it's time to change the rowing. So again, I care less and less about maximizing lats. My lats grow no matter what. I need to make sure that upper back is coming up a lot. All right, I'm doing rows every week. I'm doing deadlifts for volume. My lats are going to keep growing. They're going to keep growing. But I do need to make sure the upper back gets a higher priority. So a bent over row does that plus Again, let's look at grip training. Now that my grip is strong from all the axle bar rows, my grip is holding out really well on 600 plus pound deadlifts. I can do these without straps now. All right, because of the tension time with this double overhand, this is hella intensive on my grip. All right, do these twice a week. Again, double overhand. This is continuing to work my grip super hard. Now, a lot of times guys on this, they want to strap up and I've done that sometimes because it's like, well, why let your grip limit it? Well, I'm using this to continue to build my grip. So yeah, I'm going to keep it raw. And the same thing, I'm going to do the upright rows the same way. All this pulling and then deadlifting for volume, because again, we do five by 10 on deadlifts also on Fridays, will continue to keep my grip moving. Now, I only did four sets of these because I didn't want to overdo it. I need to get used to this movement again. Now, some people say, what about the shoulder concerns here? I've seen some really good physiology uh, from a PhD in exercise science, or, I'm sorry, in, in physical therapy who broke down why this really isn't a, the shoulder concern that people make it out to be that it shouldn't be. And I'll be honest, it hasn't really bothered my shoulders. This isn't one of the exercises that has bothered it. So again, this will help me build my whole shoulder girdle, upper back, right? All three heads of the delt and then the traps. Most of the trap gets work here. Again, get yoked, build the shoulder girdle. It'll help with my benching. It'll help with my deadlifting. And again, chasing that whole thick orc mode look. So again, helps build the shoulder girdle. And then I'll continue to do the neck work and stuff with it. Again, deadlifts, rows, then these upright rows, neck extensions. And the neck extensions themselves, I mean, part of me wants to do it on all days, but that's like 20 sets a week. I might actually start incorporating them eventually on upper days also. Right now, I really prefer them on, on the lower body days just to finish off. That way, I'm not walking in with a fatigued neck or anything when I squat or deadlift. But that might not be that big of a deal. Mainly, it's because it works the upper traps pretty hard. And that could be a concern. But I might start actually doing the neck work all four days eventually. Right? just to continue to build that up because it's not just the neck, is it? 
I feel it super hard in my whole upper trap. Right, it gets you yoked. It's not just your neck. And then we finished off with barbell curls. The same thing. People say, so why drop the fat bar? Again, I don't want to overtrain that position. Uh, I'm getting a lot of grip work now, especially with those rows, the rowing and the deadlifting and everything. I'm not as worried now. I just want to get a good quality barbell curl. I want to keep my arms growing. They're going to help my bench. They're going to help my bench if I continue to get my arms growing. So we're just going to stick with the nice old school full range of motion barbell curls all the way up to the face to where we, we make it a multi-joint exercise. Again, this is not a single joint. So people are like, you're doing a small movement. No, this isn't. This is full range of motion of the bicep working the, the major functions of the bicep. The two major, which again involves the shoulder joint also, that whole Sup supination and everything of the wrist actually doesn't build any muscle. There's nothing involved with that. So don't let people convince you that's an important function. But this is. We're working all the functions of the bicep, doing a full range of motion. Okay. So this is a nice big multi-joint movement that also works the shoulders, works your yoke. Okay, this fits very much into work mode, bringing up my bench, bringing up my deadlift. But these were hard. Like this is for me five sets of 10 with this weight. It was pretty challenging because of the range of motion. I can do a lot more if I stop down at the chest, but it's that range of motion at the top that made this hard. So I need to keep building it up. So I hope it has been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.